Hey everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 5 Brave New World on DT. So I'm going to continue where I left off. And I decided to actually use my antiquity size for landmarks instead of artifacts because I can definitely use culture more than I can use tourism. I will not have any public opinions uh, problems in this game anymore. So it makes more sense to go for flat culture instead of culture and tourism that I would get from the artifacts. So that's what I'm doing. This was a suggestion from the comments and I definitely agree. Especially since there's a vote coming up on the next turn for historical landmarks. And I definitely expect this to pass because Ethiopia will probably drop all of their votes on it. And then I will get even more culture from this. So that's what I'm doing. I already queued up another archaeologist in here. And I think I have to queue another one. Because I have three more antiquity sites. This one this one and there's one next to Timbisha. So that's a lot of culture. And I should be able to pass natural heritage sites. So that's even more culture from the wonder. I'm not actually working the wonder yet because I wanted to grow Timbisha to size 9 before working it again. But I guess I'll have to switch it. The Ottomans captured Boston. I think that was Zolo City. Because, well, yeah, it had to be a Zulu city because America is not in this game anymore. Alright, so I'm going to drop all of my votes on natural heritage sites. But I don't want to go among my people now. But I won't be working this style yet. Again, I want to grow the city a little bit faster. So that's why I'm not using the jungle tiles and not, I'm not using Mount Kalash either. I was planning to work that again once the city grows to size 9. Right, I don't think this farm is actually finished. No, it's not. So, I'm actually finishing Musician's Guild in my capital. I didn't want to delay it anymore. I don't actually have any opera houses yet, but I can build some by the time I get my first great musician. Just need to assign specialists here. So, come on. My next archaeologist will go to Timbisha. Oh nice, great scientist. So now I can finish electronics. And next up... I think I'm going to grab fertilizer. Because I need my cities to grow faster and fertilizer will definitely help with that. Alright. Time for my own proposal. Hmm, huh, what can I propose? Oh, I know. I could propose world ideology. Because my free allies or my free friends have freedom. That's China, India and Egypt. These are the three civilizations that I'm using for research agreements. They all have freedom and I would get a diplomatic boost for proposing freedom as world ideology. So that's what I'm going for. That seems to be the most obvious choice right now. Nice, historical landmarks passed and natural heritage sites passed as well. Awesome. So next up. What's next? I just need to wait now. Oh yeah, I need to actually work this style, right. So let's do it. I don't like losing all of that food, I'll just have to lose to science. I don't want to unassign all of these tiles with three or more food per turn. I still want this city to grow, I want it to grow at least to size 10. But it will grow in 4 turns, so I might assign one of these new guys to the jungle. I'm losing extra to science per turn, but that's not a huge deal right now. Alright, let's carry on then. So the problem with the game right now, with my situation, is that... On one hand, I want to weaken Ethiopia. So that they aren't able to win the game before I do. But on the other hand, it's pretty obvious that scientific victory is my best shot at actually winning the game. So I can't focus on my military and sacrifice my scientific goals. So a good example of that are research labs. I can't delay research labs just to build more units in my cities. I mean, that would absolutely make no sense. I only have research lab in my capital because I bought one for something like 1300 gold. So I could focus my capital on military production, but that might not be enough to get an army big enough to actually be able to win a war against Ethiopia. Unless I build some nukes. What? Friendly trade route? Plundered? What? Oh. Shaka sent a trade route to Agadaika. Okay, whatever. 
So if I go to war, it will have to be a very short one. Yeah, I'm actually disbanding this caravan because I want to replace it with a cargo ship. That will generate much more gold for me. I also need to sign a research agreement with China. I almost forgot about that. So let's do it. They didn't actually have enough gold when I checked. Okay, so I would have to give them some gold. They need 350 gold for that. So yeah, this is not enough. I need to wait at least one or two more turns. I could try to stage a coup in Melbourne. Egypt is only 27 ahead of me and I have level 1 spy in there. I think I'm going to try. 61% chance to succeed. Even if I fail, I'm going to get level 1 spy replacement. So it's worth trying. Nice. So that's extra city state for me. I might do the same in some of the other cities. Let's have a look. Not Vatican City at least. 73, 74... 65 in Samarkand. I could send the spy to Samarkand. That seems like a good choice. Off you go then. I want to steal as many cities as possible from Ethiopia. Not necessarily because I want to win the vote for the war leader. It's quite obvious that I won't be able to win that. But I want to get more votes and I want to reduce their votes. They have 13 votes right now. I want them to have less than that. And you know, with all of these landmarks, I would almost be tempted to try getting Crystal Redentor, because then I would be able to get my policies and tenants even faster. I could use a Great Engineer for that. Problem is, I kind of want to save my Great Engineers for more important things. So one of the more important wonders that I'll have to get is the Hubble Space Telescope. It's a very late game wonder, but it gives you two great scientists. And it's one of the more important wonders if you're going for scientific victory, especially on high difficulty level. If the other AIs are kind of on par in technology. I'm slightly ahead right now, but Ethiopia does have higher science rate. So they could actually catch up if I'm not careful enough. Either way, I definitely need to get these two great scientists. I should be able to steal something from the Ottomans on the next turn. I'm hoping to steal military science. I assume they got that. Let's have a look at the technology ranking actually. I haven't checked it in a while. I should be number one and I am. The Ottomans have 54 technologies. Okay. But I'm about to get at least one more. Possibly two more. That's my level three spy so I assume he's not going to fail. But we'll see. Come on. I can definitely steal something, because otherwise I would, I would get a notification that there are no technologies available to steal. Yeah, the Zulu turn is taking a while now. They have a lot of units, but they are a little bit behind in technology. So I think Ethiopian army is actually the strongest one in the world right now. I can check that in a moment. But I think it is, due to their technology. There we go, I can steal something, and I got fertilizer. So I can steal military science. And now... Oh, I can still grab something from them. Okay. I was thinking about sending this spy elsewhere, but if I can steal more technologies, he will stay in Istanbul. I see no reason to send him elsewhere. I guess the Ottomans might have focused on different technologies than I did. Well, either way, it doesn't matter, I suppose. I could try using my Great Engineer for the castle. It's one of my favorite wonders in the game, actually. And while I don't have a lot of castles, I do have a very nice location for that wonder in here. This is my second highest production city. So it could happen. We'll see. I definitely need to save one great engineer for the Hubble Space Telescope, but I will have enough faith for two great engineers. The first one will cost me 1000 faith, and the second one would cost me 1500. What? I don't have the religion in my capital? Okay, let's try a different city then. Yeah, 1000. The trick is, if I only get one great engineer and save faith instead, I could get great Santis for faith instead. Because I will be able to get great scientists for faith once I feel the rationalism tree. And I will definitely feel the rationalism tree. 
So I'm not sure about that wonder yet. I guess I'll have to decide later. I could try to just flat out build it without actually using a great engineer for it. It might happen, possibly. I got time to decide. I need to finish researching railroad first. I'll decide later. I don't think I'll have any problems with happiness though, so it's not a high priority wonder. I usually grab it if I need a lot of extra happiness. Come on. So, once I'm done with Oxford University, I'm going to grab Ironworks in my capital. Oh, and I didn't actually assign the specialists. Okay, I guess I'll do it right now. But then the city won't grow as fast or it won't grow at all. I don't want to delay Oxford. Okay, two turns on Oxford. Let's do it like that then. I didn't want to delay Oxford, basically. So, that's fine. Is that a new cargo ship? No, that's a trade route that expired. Okay, this was a cargo ship that was adding production in my capital. So I think I'll actually use it for gold. I could definitely use more gold right now. So, let's trade with Gandhi, I suppose. That seems to be the best option. I don't want to give more gold to Ethiopia. Seeing how they are the strongest civilization right now, other than me. But at least they are my most dangerous rival right now. Not because they are a military threat, but because they are the most likely ones to get a spaceship first. Alright, so that looks fine. And another reason is that while the Ottomans are on par technologically, their capital is a coastal city, so if I wanted to take their capital, I probably could. Oh yeah, I need to get that research agreement. I almost forgot about that. I'll just give China some gold. So I need to give them 160. And I'll get some gold per turn in return. So 4 gold per turn, 3. And now I can sign a research agreement. I should have waited for my own turn with that. But they should have enough gold. I hope they won't spend it literally right now. That would be unfortunate to say the least. Oh, Egypt stole Geneva from me as well. It's time to kick them out then. I'm actually going to use my spy for that. I could bribe the city state, but if I can use spy to get my influence back for free, then that's definitely better. Whatever, dude, I don't care. Come on. I need my research agreement. <laughs> Okay, let's grab it before they spend all of their money. Alright, I need to give them six more gold. But I guess that's okay. And research agreement. Now they will have zero. <laughs> and they are in the negatives. I'm such a scumbag. Alright, I think one of my cities grew. Yeah, this one. So now... I'm going to read all some of these assignments. With fertilizer, I can actually afford to work the jungles, I guess. And still have the city grow at a reasonable rate. Yeah, this looks reasonable, I suppose. And this looks even better. So now I'm working Mount Kailash. And I'm working both of the jungles. And the city will still grow in 9 turns. So that seems to be the best option. Oh, ivory. Oh yeah, right. Never mind that. Am I done with all of the improvements around here? Almost. 103 culture per turn now. And I'm still going to get 3 more landmarks. So I will easily double my culture rate compared to what I had 10 turns ago. But the most important thing right now is this. Oxford University. I hope I'm going to get at least some uranium. Because I might need some nukes. They want ivory from me. I don't think so, although I can't really trade that ivory to anyone. I guess I'll accept. I don't want to lose my decorations of friendship just yet. That was probably unnecessary, but whatever. I have a lot of excess ivory actually, because I can't trade it with Shaka. Shaka hates me too much to accept a reasonable deal. And I have something like 7 ivory total, so I can't actually use all of it. Alright, Oxford is done, so moment of truth. 
Give me some uranium. Yep. Nice, I see some next to my capital, awesome. That's only two uranium, but hey, I'm not complaining, that's better than zero. And uranium is the rarest strategic resource in the game, so I had so many games with zero uranium that I'm happy to have any. I do have to get a mine over there, so let's send a worker. And you can grab a farm. So am I actually the first leader to Atomicera? I think so. Yes, I am. Ethiopia is still in modern, everyone is in modern. So I'm the first leader to Atomicera, awesome. And that means I got a new spy. Oh yeah, I was going to kick Egypt out of Geneva. So I'll send my new spy to Geneva right now. Off you go. 45% chance. I'm going to wait. If my spy can rig elections, my chance to stage a coup should be higher. Because the chance to stage a coup depends on the difference in influence between you and the AI that's controlling the city. So I should be able to get that city-state without having to spend any money for it. Alright, so this guy will go up here. Because I want to get landmark on the uh, antiquity site on the jungle. Because that's going to be a very nice tile with two food, two science and something like nine culture, ten culture per turn down here. Awesome. And I still need two more landmarks. So I will easily get 130 or even 140 culture per turn. Right, let's have a look at technology ranking now. I'm quite curious. I should be two technologies ahead. Yes, I'm two technologies ahead of the Ottomans. And I'm actually four technologies ahead of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is falling behind, which is a bit strange. How's the science? Yeah, I'm getting closer. They are still getting over 800. But I'm also getting a lot of great scientists. So, now I'm going to grab ironworks in my capital and probably focus on military a bit more. I don't want to get military academy because if I'm going to build any new units this late into the game, I might as well do it in cities with military academy. I could actually get heroic epic as well for plus 15% bonus, but I would need to get barracks in every single city and that would take a while. So I'll have to stick to military academy only. I definitely want Military Academy though. Because that's worth an extra promotion on fresh new units. That's definitely worth it. Okay, Goshut is about to grow. What about Timbisha? Oh yeah, I already changed that, that one. Washake grow. I think I might actually keep this style. Because Timbisha has really low production. And this will speed up the public school by only one turn? What? Okay, maybe not. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to keep it like this anyway. That's only one turn difference. Hmm. Alright, I don't want to speed up the public school, so I'll keep it like this. Other than that, I think that's about it. Yep, that's about it. So now the question is, can I actually get freedom as world ideology? I mean, Ethiopia will definitely vote against it. That's what I would expect. What? Whatever, I don't care. New York has been captured by, the, by Ethiopia. What? Really? They went all the way over here. Okay. I didn't expect that. That's kind of interesting. Anyway. Ah, oh, what? Ethiopia wants to ban furs. What? That's a bit random. I don't actually have furs, so I don't want to ban that. But I do want to pass freedom as world ideology, so I will have to kick Ethiopia out of some of the city-states, or at least try. 13%, yeah, that's a bit too low. I'm about to stage coups in these two cities, so I hope that's going to work. If I could kick Ethiopia out of at least two or three city-states, I should be able to get freedom. I mean, I expect China, Egypt and India to vote for freedom, so that's already a lot of votes. But Ethiopia, Ottomans and Shaka might all vote against it, so that's 20 votes. And I have, what, 17 votes with me, Gandhi, China and Ramses. 
So I'd have to bribe at least two more city-states from anyone, really. Well, not from anyone. From Ethiopia, the Ottomans, or from Shaka. There's no point bribing a city-state that belongs to someone who's actually going to vote for freedom in the first place, because that doesn't actually help me. Yes, one of the goals uh, is getting m more city-state allies for the benefits they bring. But the short-term goal is to actually pass freedom as world ideology. So I need to think about that. Anyway, barracks are done. I'm not sure why I build barracks in here, because I need research lab in here. Yes, I definitely need a research lab in here. In fact, hmm, 21 turns to grow. What about 15 turns to complete the research lab? And the city will still grow in 7. I think I'll keep it like this on full production focus. Yeah, this seems reasonable. I need this research lab to finish as fast as possible. This is my second highest science city. Yes. And this one as well. I need research lab here too. But this city won't really have any problems with research lab. Can I speed this up a bit? 45 turns to grow. Hmm, I technically don't need this city to grow anymore. I could focus it on production. I need to have at least one city focused on production, so I'm going to keep it like this. That will allow me to get archaeologists faster. As well as the cargo ship and research lab. Yes, it won't grow anytime soon, but I'm okay with that. 14 is enough for that city. What about my capital? I don't need my capital to grow either, so I'll just reset it and set full production focus. I don't need more specialists in here, so it can stay like this. And I'm actually going to finish this part here, continue in next one. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.